What is good? We're back. We got Austin Abbott in the flesh. Be sure to go check him out on the Twitters at Austin Abbott FF. At your boy CM, we're ready to roll into a little must draft rookies in every round. And we're talking super flex tight end premium as per usual. Um, so we got some rookie ADP up. So we're going to kind of use that as the baseline a little bit. But wanted to go through and, and kind of pinpoint a guy that, that we really like in each round. Probably stay off the top six or so prospects. Um, but everything else is fair game. Just going to have a little conversation of, of who we like, who we're taking, and uh, and why. And, and maybe a couple of pockets that, that we really like. So... Austin, who is who is your first must draft rookie in round one? Casey, you're gonna be really surprised by this man. It's it is Lad McConkey. Ooh, it's I a am, wee lad. I'm back, man. I'm <laughs> I'm I'm in. I'm fully on board with Lad McConkey. Full transparency, I had him around the two five in my rankings, two six. Uh, a few months ago, and I have he has slowly crept up, man. I have slowly become just more enamored, just more yeah. into Lad McConkey, the landing spot, the draft capital. It, he checks a lot of boxes, man. And and there's a lot that I could say about Lad McConkey. And and some of the reasons that I'm really in on him now. When I thought about where he landed in Los Angeles with Justin Herbert, I said, okay, what actually happened, right? They prioritized the Los Angeles Chargers at his prioritized Joel. They're keeping Justin Herbert upright. Hmm. Okay. Uh, the Chargers, for what it's worth, have the most vacated targets in the NFL. Okay. Lad McConkey was also first in percentage of targets caught at 81.1%. You know that the chemistry that he built with his quarterback was real. He's going to do the same thing with Justin Herbert. 3.26 yards per route run this year. A really, really strong number for Lad McConkey. Mm. Uh, this is this is a player who had a he ran a 4.39. Really quick, man. 94th percentile, the 34th overall pick, six foot, 186 pounds. His speed, like I'm talking about his 40 time, his height and weight is practically identical to Garrett Wilson. I'm not saying he's Garrett Wilson for a second. I'm just telling you just to give you an idea. And, and uh, you know, it's it kind of helps me sleep at night thinking, <laughs> knowing that. Um, but but he, hear me out, man. Justin Herbert, through his first three seasons, he had the most passing yards in NFL history, okay? The second most passing touchdowns in NFL history through his first three seasons. On top of that, I mentioned him earlier, Joe Wall, the fifth overall pick, now blocking for him, keeping him upright, the top offensive tackle in the 2024 NFL draft. This is, it's massive for not only Justin Herbert, but for the entire offense, the entire Los Angeles offense. Uh, you know, LA had 600 in total, 613 total targets in 2023, that was the most in the NFL, okay? Regression, drink. Regression is inevitable. I know it's going to happen, but you got to remember, 395 vacated targets. Again, the most in the NFL, 64.4%. Uh, and, and Lad, once I really found this interesting. Shout out to Matt Harmon, reception, perception. 83.3% success rate on out routes. Really strong number from Lad mm -hmm. McConkey. And, and I'll leave you with this, Casey. Lad McConkey, he truly has a golden opportunity to succeed in the NFL. Yeah, no, I, you know, Lad's Lad's been my guy. This is this is just he's his spacing, his the concepts, just such a fluid mover. The jab step is ridiculous. Run after the catch, start, stop, separator. I mean, inside and out, out breaking routes are are phenomenal. I, I just everything this guy does i i really really like it and then on top of it he tested out of the off the charts and just showed you that the, the speed is there um just seems like he's really gonna fit with kind of what the chargers are doing and and how they're gonna operate moving forward i saw some people talking shit about greg roman and everywhere he's been the receivers have never like michael crabtree was a really productive wide receiver uh, with the Niners back in the day. And then they, you know, it's eluding me, the wide receivers with with uh, Greg Roman in, um, say, in in Baltimore. But he also had some good ones. They also, like, you know, beginning of Lamar's career, you know, wouldn't wouldn't be the strongest 
a cerebral passer, I wouldn't say. And, you know, so now you're, you're coming in here with a guy like Roman, with a guy like Herbert. And the, the notion that Herbert is, is being so disrespected right now and the notion that, that since they're never, like, they're going to throw the ball five times a game, which isn't going to, ha- you know, they'll probably be on the lower <laughs> end of things, but they're going to, you could bet your ass they're going to be super fucking efficient throwing that football. And I'll, I'll take that all day long. It's not going to be long before Justin Herbert is back to the, the top cream of the crop of, of, of quarterbacks in the league that everybody envies. Uh, and I, and Harbaugh is going to, going to do it. And Roman's going to get him there. Uh, and I, and I, and I love it now. And I'm not a huge Greg Roman guy, but I think it's a, what, what they're about to do, the culture shift of everything. I love it. And I, and I love Lad McConkey being, being potentially the, uh, the lead dog in, in that fight. So, uh, we'll see what Quentin Johnson's got up his sleeve. We know Josh Palmer can, can play, uh, well enough, but Lad Lad is is the man for the job. I think I think he sets up perfectly. So so I love that. Uh, so if I had to pick one, it would be Lad McConkey too. Um, but uh, I was going to kind of skip the first round. But I just want to throw something. Brock Bowers seems to be getting a little disrespect. People people want to fade Brock. It hasn't been happening a ton in our drafts, but I see a lot of people talking about Brock being faded. I see some some screenshots of Brock being faded. And I guess I would just kind of say this, and I've said it before, but like. Malik, nobody cares that n- nobody's talking any shit about where Malik Neighbors landed and dropping him down for any reason. And the same people who think Malik Neighbors is awesome are probably the same people who think Danny Dimes is terrible and sucks and can't produce. And so you're knocking Brock Bowers down because of his landing spot and because of the quarterback and because of the situation. Well, I mean, how are the Giants, if you believe that Daniel Jones isn't any good, which I think he's just fine. Um, uh, yeah, I don't think he's elite by any means, but I think he's better than kind of what people say he is. Um, you know, if you're if you're gonna if you're gonna knock Bowers for all that, but you don't knock neighbors for any of that, I just I find that as as quite a you know it could be the same exact situation where both of them are just in purgatory here for a little bit of year because the offense and the quarterback maybe holds them back a little bit. But I I I, I think it's nonsense to be fading Brock Bowers by any means because of the landing spot. I mean, the guy got ridiculous draft capital. He's an outstanding wide receiver playing tight end, essentially. The yak is off the charts. Um, he, he's a big game player. Listen, JJ, to, to, to take JJ in front of him in super flex, understandable, great landing spot, and it's a quarterback. Anybody other than that is nonsense in tight end premium uh, to, to, to put in behind. So I'll, I'll go Brock Bowers just because I wanted to throw it in there as giving him a little bit of love. So, Hey guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free discord channel or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, and also our 2024 rookie draft kit complete with rookie rankings, ADP and player pages all for your pleasure Austin let's let's move on to round two who, who's the guy in round two who uh, I can't stop. you can't stop drafting you, you, you just don't stop till you get who, who, who are you taking here yeah so you mentioned you mentioned that Brock Bowers keeps slipping a little bit you mentioned Brian Thomas and the other episode keeps slipping a little bit and I feel like Jalen Polk keeps on slipping mm. a little bit man we're seeing again oh, Casey and I've talked about this time after time a wide receiver, a very good prospect, in my opinion. Really good draft capital. We love the production that we saw at Washington. We love a lot of us, you know, myself included, we really like his quarterback, Drake May, the 37th overall pick, prioritized by New England. I, I, I feel like Jalen Bulk is truly not being talked about enough. I don't think the draft capital is being talked about enough. And man, if if there's anybody with a clear path to just take over, it, why why not Jalen Polk, right? And I don't think that we're gonna look back and and be like, wow, Jalen Polk, top ten wide receiver in football. I don't think that's gonna happen. I don't think he's gonna get there. But I'm just telling you, he's the landing spot is is really really nice, man. He was Jalen Polk. That is 13 of 24 this season. 54.2% in contested catch rate this season. His career, 51%. Really good numbers. I mean, that is better than that is better than Malik Neighbors. I understand that's not neither of those players bread and butter. That's not what they're set out to do. Um, I'm just saying, man, like Jalen Polk, really, really good in that contested catch metric. You know, uh, 69 catches, 1,159 yards, nine touchdowns. Really solid this year. And, and if there's one thing I want to leave you with, for Jalen Polk, if there's anybody in all of college football that had to work 
their butt off and earn targets. It is Jalen Polk playing alongside of Roma Dunze and Jalen McMillan at Washington, man. This man had to earn it, man. Earn every rep, earn every target. So for him to to really receive just the immense draft capital, I, I'm really happy for him. I genuinely mean that. And I, yeah. I really think that, you know, him again, a potential wide receiver one on uh, for for a team falling to you in mid second great value you cannot leave your draft without Jalen Polk yeah I mean I, the where he's fallen and our ADP has him at at two nine wide receiver 11 I, he's not the sexy pick as the, the as the grouping ahead of him the Coleman the Pearsall the Mitchell mm-hmm. the Leggett but he feels like a safe pick like you you're gonna be able to start Jalen Polk he's gonna go out do the little things he's a professional seemingly right off the rip uh so I like uh I like that. I like the value of Polk. I don't like him in the front half of the round, but if he starts middle, middle to to middle end, I love it, and I I, I feel you on that one. Uh, I'm gonna go Ben uh, Sinnott here. It seems like the public's kind of catching on, so it might not stay for long. But you know, I end up taking him a lot, and I should let him fall. But sometimes I see him top of the third. Uh, Two ten is the ADP that we have, and I I can't. You know, I just. I, I just can't. That's a that's an auto pick every single time. I, that's just mm-hmm. I love it. I love it so much. He's he's so versatile. He can do so much. He can get out there and just play the straight up tight end position, or you can kind of move him all around. He can play H back. He can play fullback. You can do you can run him out of so many different spots, and he can get open, create a mismatch, um, or just straight up play tight end. And then he also does the other parts of the tight end position, which you know. Brock Bowers maybe doesn't do, maybe Jatavion Sanders don't do at a super high level, but but Ben Sinnott can do all of those things. Like I said, he can come out of the backfield, play a fullback, uh, smash smash it in there on third and one. You give it to him or let him block, or you can hit the foot the fake fullback, uh, you know, on the play action and and run him out of the backfield and let him catch it for a first down, or you can line him up at tight end. Plus he can he smash he can smash your D lineman. Uh, if, if you want him to on the end or, or DN rather, you can put him in motion and, and there's plenty of, of him just crushing dudes in motion on a run play. Um, he can just straight up plow in, in, in blocking. Uh, so I, I think he's got every every bit and piece at the tight end position that you want. He's he's a he I, I've called him kind of like a queen of a chessboard. And not that he's yep. that important, but he can just do so many different things. It'll be up to the offensive coordinator. And I'm not saying that, you know, he's got like, you know, every play is going to be lined up. So he should be lined up at the tight end position a whole lot. But like the fact that you can do those other things, I think it's a um, it'd be a tra- travesty to not kind of line him up and do some get different alignments uh, with him. Now, they do have Ertz in that room and uh, Cl- Kingsbury is is familiar with Ertz. He brought him over, but Ertz is older. Uh, coming off an injury, even if I have to wait for Senate for for a minute, the RAS score is really good. People are already comparing him to Laporta. I don't love that, um, uh-huh. but very athletic. You know, only six four, so not huge, um, and just right under two fifty. Uh, but you know, back in the day, you know, Chris Cooley was over there. Kind of gives you those kind of vibes from 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 what was going on. He was awesome. Um, and, and they've done well with, with the undersized tight end a little bit, not saying that Senate's terribly undersized, but, uh, the athleticism then jumps off the charts. So, so many things that Senate can do, uh, for that team who is just, uh, making uh, just another step forward. And then on top of that, you have a guy like Jaden Daniels, who's going to be running the show who, Hey, we, we can buy a little time. We can, we can use Senate to, to block in the backfield a little bit, and then we can, we can move him out on broken plays. And he's not a, he's not a detriment to be throwing the ball to you can throw it to him downfield, or you can throw it to him at the line of scrimmage and he can go get you some more yardage. So I just, it just feels like a really good reset at that position for the Washington football team or whatever the hell the commanders Reds. I don't even know what the hell they're called anymore. Uh, but I, it's, it's a, it's a really, I, I, I can't stop taking, um, taking Senate and he, he's the must draft and, in the round two with especially the value it's mostly about value for me and i won't i won't stop so all right austin what do you got here for the third round where you, yeah, you got for us and he he is easily turned into my tight end too i yeah. am i am fully well, that's on board. that's that's what you got to do man like i listen 
coming into the draft, I didn't change whether it was Sinnott or Sanders. Sanders was my two. I'll tell you Sanders was my two. I love Sanders. I still like Sanders, but you got fourth round and, and what second round draft capital between the two. Like, and, and it's the Senate was always a really good player. Just the draft. Cap, so you, we have to adjust. And now I love the value on Senate and I love the value on Sanders, but I'm not, I'm not drafting. I'm not going to say, Oh, I, I had, I, I, I'm keeping Sanders as my tight end two here. Like, no, we got, we got to adjust a little bit They're They're telling us that you like him. And I like Senate that he was the three. So it's an easy bump up for me. We adjust, we still take Sanders, right? But we adjust and we and we like Synod. And we're, we're talking premium here. Like I said, 1.5 is, is the ADP that we're looking at. So love, 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 love the uh, the Synod value right now. Not not leaving that back half of the second. So I'll trade into there to you, grab him. And you always say it, man. It's just another piece of the puzzle. That right. That is the NFL draft, the draft capital, right? That right. changed our evaluations, our rankings. It changes everything, man. It's it's a big, big, big piece of the puzzle. Right. Um, to answer your question, man, we're talking third round now, another prospect, another player that I really, really like that you cannot leave your draft without. He's the 309 in my rankings, Tyrone Tracy Jr. Now, I think he's one of two running backs that have a, a legitimate chance of hitting that, that are in day three, right? Day three running backs historically really, really struggle to hit. There are There are few and far between. You got Isaiah Pacheco most recently looks like He's got he I love I love what I'm seeing from Pacheco. And I think that there are some running backs in this class that I don't know if they get quite get that that far, but I think that there are some running backs in this class that that are again worth the dart throw at their ADP. And that's kind of what it's all about, Casey, man. It's it, you know, we play a game where we have to prioritize value in, in a lot of these trades, right? A lot of these drafts. Draft for value, trade for need. I always preach it. Let's talk about let's talk about Tyrone Tracy Jr. And a lot of people might not know this. This was his first season as a running back. Okay, mm-hmm. first season. So, so take that for what it's worth. Uh, he had 46 forced missed tackles on 114 attempts. I, that is crazy. That does right. not happen. That yeah. does not happen. Period. And he did that in his first season as a running back. Right. Struggled as a wide receiver. Transferred to Purdue. Just really really succeeded right out of the gate man again the 309 in my rankings and he crushed at the nfl combine not only did he crush all season once he got to the combine man he really balled out 448 40 time 82nd percentile his vertical jump was 40 inches 94th percentile three cone drill 681 83rd percentile dude he he dominated i mean this is exactly what you want to see and i was really hoping that honestly Maybe fourth round draft capital. I didn't think he would go that early. I just thought his combine was so good that that I, I just I thought he was glaring. I thought that the production was real. Uh, and and here's what you really need to know, man. Pay, if there's one thing that you take away from Tyrone Tracy, it's right here, man. More missed tackles forced than Trey Benson on 42 less attempts. Right. That that's absolutely going to get your attention. Yeah. He is 5'11", 209 pounds. So you know that the size is real, man. I'm not saying he's going to go and be the next three down running back. I'm I'm just saying like he's he's got the size, he's got that build. He was he did go in the fifth round at nine seven eight Ross score. That was forty second out of nineteen hundred and three running backs in in combine history. Uh, and and this is this is how I'll end it, Casey. In the twenty twenty four class, Tyrone Tracy ranks first in yards after contact, third in broken tackles per touch and sixth in yards per attempt okay really really elusive uh super efficient and just really really promising vision i i like so much about tyron tracy and and keep in mind man keep in mind saquon barkley out of town i know devin singletary signed a three-year deal he got some decent money the uh potential out is until 2026 just just hey man, anytime you go from Saquon Barkley to only having Devin Singletary in front of you, it's it's a big step forward for for Tyrone Tracy. Yeah, uh, you know, just him getting on the field, him getting more snaps, him succeeding. You know, yeah, I love I love the the, the shot at, at Tracy. So I can't I can't dispute that. I will I I I, I do think Devin Singletary will have a firm grasp on that backfield. Yep. But I think I think Tracy you know has has a good shot to uh, 
you know, get the juices flowing for some people and, and a lot of people's favorites right now. And, you know, we, we've been talking about Tracy for a while. Um, and, and, you know, I think we both really like him. I, I, I would say that maybe it, the draft capital for him as far as rookie draft goes is, is and some things that I've seen has probably gotten a little hand out of hand for me. Like I would like to see him be in the fourth round and then I'll take a shot on, on Tracy. The third might be a little too much for me, but Hey, at the end of the day, like if he goes out there and makes some splashy plays in preseason, you know, he'll be, he's hot already. He'll be even hotter. So I get it, man. I like it. I, I like Tracy. And again, and like you said, great receiving skills um, and, and good, good with the ball in his hands. So uh, can't, can't hate on it at all. Lo- love the shot on Tracy. So my, my third round guy that I can't leave the draft without was somebody in the last episode who we kind of talked about, just like, you know, you like Polk in the last episode. I'm going Burton here. We got him at the 303. Uh, sometimes, you know, creeps up into that Senate range, 210, 211, 212. But the value on Burton, if he's anywhere around in there, and I'm kind of using him in the third because that's what our ADP is suggesting, um, and, and I love it. Uh, we've touched on it a little bit in the last episode and you asked me why, you know, and I've talked about this stat before, but uh, reception perception, just, I think this is one of the better stats to, to put a cherry on, on a prospect of basically saying, um, against specifically press, uh, he trails only Roma Duze and Marvin Harrison jr. Uh, in this class. And then it man and zone success rates. He's top three in the class and it's just, He's just out there separating and, and running big boy routes uh, and getting open and, and knows how to do it. There's, you know, Harmon cites it in here. You can you can kind of see it on the field that there's a lot of routes that don't really matter that much in college because of the offense that they're running. But Burton kind of runs uh, some some big boy routes and then it all shows up on there. Really fast guy. And the red flags have kept him out of being more in a prominent role. And now that you're in the end of the second, early third, uh, take all the shots you want on, on the guys with potential red flags tied to burrow, uh, now for, you know, the next, however long, uh, there, you, there's already, you know, obviously there's it's video season, so I don't really give a shit about the catches, but what I love is that, you know, he's talking about burrow, those videos of burrow, just kind of showing him exactly how he wants him to run those routes, how he wants him to get up on a defender and then bang, peel out and though that's all the little nuances of getting on the same page of your quarterback that's going to keep the ball in your hands keep if you could pick all those little things up and and Burton seems doesn't seem to um not be a worker and a good player just had some some spots in his profile as far as off the field stuff where you that were questionable that I think have led to him being pushed down a little bit but at this point uh snap him up grab him up and 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 the the chance for explosion and acceleration and value because of him tied to Burrow and because of of uh, the the way he plays the game I think is a really high uh, percentage. So I mean, uh, once again, this is just somebody that if you're if you're seeing him in the third round, if I'm I'm interested in trading back in the sec the two ten two eleven two twelve area or three one three two three three like I'm trying to trade until Burton's off the board I'm trying to trade in and grab him um, and just uh, see see what the uh, if I can catch some lightning in a bottle with Burton, we have the T Higgins situation, which we're not really sure exactly how that's going to play out. And maybe, maybe nothing, maybe T Higgins ends up staying and, and the Bengals find some, some cash, you know, in a remodel behind a wall or something. And they're like, Oh, we're going to throw it at T now. I think what you're going to see here, we like, how is Burton really going to get in the field? Well, I think what you could possibly see here is chase move to the slot a little bit more Burton actually can play outside and the flanker role in in both of those positions, which you would assume T is probably going to be in the X and you'll, you'll probably see Burton as the flanker because he can stretch the field. So he can kind of do everything that you want him to do. And also, you know, I think chase is, is a little bit of a buy right now as well, because it seems to be the grip has, has slightly loosened on, on, uh, chase overall people have you know as soon as he's not producing at a high level it seems there at least is a little crack to maybe shimmy your way in to go ahead and buy yourself some jamar chase um and then if he i think if he goes into the slot a little more this year like what a crazy mismatch that is um he's had success in the slot before and and burton then can kind of stay outside i think you'll see a little bit of uh you know cross pollinization cross homogenization if you will uh but uh, i i really really like Jer- jerome burton and i just <laughs> I'm going to try to get all that Burton, baby. I already got a couple shares, so let's go. Anything you want to add to that, or are we moving on to the fourth? 
Yeah, real quick, Burton, again, just just a player. The upside is real with him, man. You know, anytime you produce as a true freshman at Georgia with some of the biggest names in the country, like Pickens, you know, uh, just just Bowers, uh, you know, whether it was James Cook or Darnell Washington, I'm I'm just naming some of the players that he were to, he was able to produce with at a high level right out of the gate, true freshman at Georgia, and on top of it, also producing at Alabama. Right, you know you know that the talent is absolutely there. It was evident, um, and and the landing spot, man. Right, it's it's right now. It's a difficult call just because of the situation, but I, I think I think things are going to get better for him and. You know why not, right? Don't is that isn't that what we want, Casey? Especially in the third, the fourth yeah. round, don't, yeah. don't we want to take a chance on these players with real, <laughs> real upside, right? Isn't that what we should probably prioritize? We shouldn't play it safe and look yeah. for someone who's going to have you know 500, 600 yards. Like let, dude, screw that. Like let's go for it, man. Let's go for the home run at this point. Yeah, no, I I I, I agree a hundred percent. Give me all give me all that, Burton. So, uh, who are your guys in the fourth round here, Austin? Yeah, final player, I'll wrap it up, Casey. Kamani Vidal out of Troy, the running back that landed with the Los Angeles Chargers. Wow, what what a perfect, and I mean perfect landing spot for a day three running back, right? Day three running backs. If if there is if if I could choose any team in the NFL to to end up playing for, man, I, I think the Chargers are probably at the top of my list. <laughs> sure. Uh I mean, he had he had almost 300 attempts last year. 661 rushing yards and 15 touchdowns keep in mind he played for troy let me let me be clear right the con- the competition far from good right I, casey i always say this when you're at, at a lower tier college you have two options you have to absolutely dominate or you have to transfer to a better school and then crush there yeah he decided to stay and crush so he checked one of the two boxes right he performed at an at a extremely high level. So good on Vidal. He played 14 games in consecutive seasons. The biggest threats we have, what Gus Edwards, JK Dobbins, Dobbins. I, I, right, right, right. Pro- probably those two running backs, they come to mind and, and keep in mind that Joe all the fifth overall Ooh. pick, right, right. Just perfect. I mean, that is exactly what I want to see. If I am Kamani Vidal, I am, I am jacked up for the landing, landing spot. I am jacked up for Joe all Justin Herbert, um, and and let me read you some of the career stats that that he had at Troy because they are they are stupid. He had over four thousand rushing yards. All right, the the production was very real, man. Seven hundred receiving yards, uh, five point one yards per carry. He was efficient. Ninety two receptions and thirty four touchdowns. Right, big big. These are big boy numbers. A large workload, and I thought it was really telling that. That the that oh my god I almost called them the San Diego Chargers. Jeez. <laughs> uh, I thought it was really telling that the Los Angeles Chargers passed on Malik Neighbors and they drafted Joe All. And the reason I say that is because I think that actions speak louder than words. And what does that tell you, Casey? That the Los Angeles Chargers want to heavily invest in running the ball. And and again, if you are Kamani Vidal, you are you are jacked up, man. He is he is five eight. He's a little on the shorter side, two thirteen. He is twenty two years old. Ran a four four six forty time eighty seventh percentile Ooh, baby, pretty nice speed. Yeah. Um, and forty look man, forty is overrated. It's not very important to me. But anytime you're on the faster side, I ain't mad about it. Right, no. I'll leave it at that. I ain't mad at. I ain't mad about it. Uh, first in the twenty twenty four class in missed tackles forced with ninety four. Again, not the best collegiate defenses that he played against, but he sure as hell crushed them. And and I'll I'll leave you with this nugget, Casey. Uh, Los Angeles running back depth chart that is it's wide open yeah right it is it is truly the epitome of of wide open Got and I know that though. I know that he received sixth round draft capital but I, I I just again I would argue I cannot stress it enough one of the best landing spots in LA and I I just think that this offensive line in in Los Angeles is it's it is significantly improved uh there's there's no true workhorse running back which I find wildly appealing sure, um I just I just Again, another player with a golden opportunity to succeed, Kamani Vidal. Yeah, I mean, I've been hot and heavy on Vidal all offseason, so love that you brought him up here, and I think I think that's perfectly uh, said. So uh, my last – I got two for you, and it's probably two that we've – every time we talk about late-round guys that you and I both bring up. I like Malik Washington. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, they've signed Odell. It's a one-year, $3 million deal. He's 32 or whatever, like – 
Odell will probably play, but you got Tyreek, you got Waddle, you got Odell. There's a spot for Washington to get some snaps this year. He's he had 110 catches at at uh, Virginia, 1400 yards, nine touchdowns. This guy's just a G out there. I, I love. He's something that they don't really have there. Um, and and I I I feel like if we could just get some some. A couple of snaps throughout the year through the slot. I think he could start to car- kind of carve out a role. And Tyreek said that he's not long for playing there. Odell, I mean, Odell, I mean, Malik could beat out Odell. Probably not. Odell's probably a seasoned veteran at this point and, and could do. But and, and Malik, I understand, late, late round draft pick. So I'm not really expecting a whole lot. But I love this guy, late fourth rounder. Uh, all day long uh, in your rookie drafts and you know it could be real soon you might might be a half a season or a whole season before you even see a whole lot of Malik Washington but I, I think this guy's going to go out there um, and and really earn a spot on this Miami team and, and be a, a a function of their offense for for years to come and then Jacob Cowing we talked about him in the last show 5'8 168 23 years old uh, mm-hmm. But 85 and 90 catches in the last two seasons, 95 percentile breakout age, 99th percentile target share, 99th percentile college dominator. Like, you know, just crushing a whole lot of a whole lot of the, the important stats. Uh, college first downs per route run versus man since 2008. Devonta Smith on the leaderboard, Tank Dell on the on the leaderboard, Malik Neighbors and then Jacob Cowing and Jordan Addison. So that's elite company up there. Uh, for him and then separation versus man coverage in this draft class he was number three overall at 81 percentile uh 81 percent rather so i mean this he's he's a really really fun player once again the niners have a lot of a lot of uh mouths to feed right now but you know i debo probably not a guy who's going to be playing deep into his uh twilight of his career just for the way that he plays the game and then i Maybe they pay him, maybe they don't, but he's out of there. And, you know, the Niners uh, don't really haven't had a strong slot player um, because, you know, obviously they're they're probably on the lower end of running three eleven personnel. But, you know, they're going to be evolving. They're going to be doing a, a lot of different things, changing. They'll probably run a little bit more eleven potentially, especially with Ricky uh, being drafted a little bit. So they can they can put some other wrinkles in there of some things that you haven't seen before. So. Again, you might have to wait a minute for Cowing, but I, I, I love the guy. Uh, just a lot of fun to watch. He's going to be, you know, probably out there. They lost uh, Ray Ray McLeod, so I could see him him or Ricky uh, being out there on kick and punt returns. Both of those guys can do it, and the, the new kickoff rules um, could be a big part of that. So uh, just two guys to look out for later, later, late fourth round. That's like your 411, 410, or 412 picks. Uh, for me so anything to add before we wrap this up Austin yeah all these guys we're talking about they're gonna hit they're gonna be studs you know <laughs> that's that's how it works um Casey I want to add Chris Greer Chris Greer the uh, general manager for the Miami Dolphins you and Casey you you sent me uh you sent me an article it was Chris Greer was was being bugged by Mike McDaniel for like <laughs> incessantly three- yeah for like three consecutive rounds to draft Malik Neighbors. So we're sitting here talking about Neighbors getting really bad draft capital. What did he go? Round six, was yeah. it? Um, hell, man, he could have realistically went round four, four maybe, yeah. right? It could have been a, a lot earlier. I'm, I'm just throwing that out there. That was yeah. a real article. Mike McDaniel, the head coach of the Miami Dolphins, literally said that. So, I mean – Hey man, that uh again, actions speak louder than words. And the fact that he was in his ear saying, We need this guy for three rounds, it's just it's it's just another piece of the puzzle. He it's can, a little nugget. And I, you know, I know as soon as we get a physical guy out there, everyone who wants to compare him to Debo. I'm not saying this guy's Debo, but McDaniel's coming from the Niners kind of tree learner and everything. They don't really have a like a big physical presence out there that you throw the ball to that's just nasty. I mean, and not Washington's not big. He's 5'8", like 196 or something like that. Um, but he's a very, very physical player. He's very hard to deal with. And, and they just would give them another dimension of, of, of somebody. So uh, I think that's a good good recall there, Austin. Make sure you go check out Austin at Austin Abbott. Two, T, two B's, two T's, and two F's on the Twitters. Guys crushing over there. Uh, make sure you check out the FF Dynasty on the Twitters. If you're listening on the podcast, five-star review would be much appreciated. What are you doing? All you got to do is click the button if you haven't already. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe, comment below on the YouTube page. We got the $5 holler for the Discord, for the Patreon, all sorts of good stuff going on over there. We got mock drafts at the yin-yang, both rookie and super flex uh, startups. We're going to be going live 
uh, some more probably at some point next week. Try to do every other week or so. Might ramp it up to once a week. Who knows? Um, and then we get three extra episodes on the Patreon side of things over there per month. So all sorts of, of great stuff. Be sure to check that out. Austin, you got anything before we get out of here? It's been fun, man. I like, uh, I'm still enjoying talking rookies, Casey. I'm yeah. not, uh, I don't, I don't have the fatigue right now, man. I've been, uh, you know, we, we're now what, like close to a month after the NFL draft. And it's, it's still a lot of fun, man. I think we're starting to get a better idea of, of some of the roles that these players are, are going to actually have during their rookie campaigns. And uh, I'm just, I'm looking forward to it, man. This is, it's one of the slower times of the year, right? The month of May, but Hey man, we're, we're getting there. It's a grind and, and it'll be here before you know it. Yeah, no, I agree. I love it. We're, uh, we're, we're, we're in, we're in the startup season, but we're, like I said, still going to sprinkle in a bunch of the rookie talk. I think it's, um, I think it's it's needed as as things progress and you know everybody's rookie draft isn't isn't right after the draft so I think they get sprinkled in there'll be some in June some in July and then another big run of them uh, in August so keep it locked and loaded we'll keep hammering the rookie content for you and we got plenty of startup and we'll be doing some best ball stuff as well so like I said like subscribe keep it locked and loaded over here and we'll catch you next time peace <laughs>